Let us try an example to design for the shear reinforcement of a beam. The beam is simply supported. It has 6 meters span. The beam width is 300 mm and its depth is 540 mm. It is subjected to an UDL of 80 kN per meter, which is a factor load. The concrete strength is 30 and the steel strength is 250 as mount steel is being used as the shear link. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve this problem, first you need to calculate the shear load. The shear load is obtained from the shear force diagram which is equivalent to WL per 2 which is the reaction force and equals to 240 kN. First, you test the shear resistance of 22 shear angle by using this equation. Substitute the relevant value into the equations you will get the resistance of 530.3 kN load. The shear resistance is greater than the shear load. Therefore, you will assume the theta is equal to 22 degree. Next, you calculate the shear link. Substitute the relevant equations, you will get the shearing to be 0.912. Referring to the shearing table, we are looking for a number which is greater than the 0.912. And in this case, you provide R8100. The provided shearing is equals to 1.005. Next, you check for the minimum shearing. Substitute the relevant value. You will get minimum shearing is equals to 0 0.525. It is less than the AS provided. Therefore, it is considered acceptable. From this 0.525, you are looking for a shearing which is slightly higher than 0.525 from the shearing table. In this case, you would like to provide a shearing of R8175 at 0.574. Here you need to determine the equivalent shear force due to the minimum shearing. By using the shearing equations, you keep this shear load as an unknown. Then you will find 151.1 as the equivalent load for the minimum shearing. Try to locate the positions of that minimum equivalent shearing load. These equations can be used, and it is found that it is located at 1.11 meter from the beam end. This means you have a large shear load at both ends, which you provide with R8100 and you are providing a minimum shearing of R8175 at the middle section of the beam. This practice can help you to reduce the amount of the shearing for economical purpose. The 1.1 meter is referring to a distance from the beam end 1.1 meter to be covered by the normal shearing while the remaining at the mix band it will be covered by the minimum shearing. It is always a good practice to indicate a number of shearing required so that 
the contractor can easily calculate the number of shelling to be provided for a beam. The calculations is as given in the equation. For the middle span, you will use the length divided by the spacing of the sp uh, shelling plus 1 that will be equals to total number of shelling for this section. As for the ends section, the shelling only start at the face of the support. This distance need to minus the half of the beam width of the support. Then the same principles apply. In this case, you require 22 R8 at the 100 mm spacing and you require 23 R8 at 175 mm spacing. Next, you are to check for the spacing of the shelling. The longitudinal maximum spacing is limited by 0.75D. From the calculations, it is equal to 405mm. The provided shelling is less than the maximum spacing. Therefore, it is considered acceptable. The minimum spacing is determined as 80mm which is less than the provided spacing. Therefore, it is considered acceptable. The maximum transfer spacing is limited by 0.75D, which is 405, and just happened that it is less than 600mm. Therefore, the value of 405 is adopted. The actual transverse spacing is given by this formula and it is found that it is equal to 242 which is less than the maximum allowable transverse spacing. With that, it is considered acceptable. Next, you need to calculate the additional longitudinal tensile force caused by the shear load. By using these equations, you will get the additional tensile force of 300 kN. You need to check if additional reinforcement bar is required. This equation can be used. As it is a simply supported beam, you can assume this equals to zero. When you found this is less than the MED maximum per Z, that means you do not require additional reinforcement bar, but you need to extend the reinforcement bar given at the mix pan to the support. When you found that this is more than the MED per Z, that means you require additional reinforcement bar. The amount of reinforcement bar required at the support is given by these equations. As the relevant data is not given in the questions, we will introduce this in terms of concept here.